Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us today in this customer webinar that we are where we're going to be reviewing uh, sales tax management in SAP Business One. Uh, together with uh, me uh, today and uh, the person that is going to be delivering this webinar and the presentation on sales tax management is no other than our consulting director, Marisa Molina. Good morning, Marisa. Good morning, Clarita. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Marisa, for taking the time uh, to prepare this presentation and to be here with us today. Um, I was reviewing uh, your profile. Most of the people attending this webinar already know you, but they might not know that you are a quinceañera. <laughs> we should be celebrating <laughs> that you that you recently had your 15th anniversary uh, with Consensus and with SAP Business One. This is amazing. Uh, congratulations for that, Marisa. Thank you, Clarita. That was February the 7th. So yes, quinceanera. Exactly. It's very recent. We should be singing happy birthday to you. But uh, uh, for us, the value that you bring to every webinar, it's incredible. So think about, think about it. Marisa has been implementing uh, SAP Business One in companies such as yours for, for 15 years now. So uh, her expertise and what she brings to the table it's, are, are amazing. So whenever I can grab some of her time and, and get her to do a webinar, webinar for us, I, I feel immensely grateful. So thank you again, Marisa, for being with us today. It is really nice uh, to have this uh, opportunity to reach out to you with the sales tax management. Uh, only one comment that I want to make. Uh, I'm an engineer. I'm not a financial person. I love accounting. Uh, at the end, it's, it is numbers, right? Um, but keep in mind, I'm, I'm my main uh, purpose for the webinar is how to do it in SAP Business One please always consult with your finance uh, controller, CPA, accountant. I could be saying something that it is, actually it is not related to your business, but uh, just, just a comment, okay? Yes, yes. Thank you, Marisa, for clarifying that. So your obligation is something that you need to confirm with your CPA uh, or your financial consultant. The way to manage that obligation, uh, whatever you want to do with your taxes, the way to do that in SAP Business One, that's where uh, that's what Marisa is going to be sharing uh, with all of us. My name is Clara Custodio. For those of you who don't know me, I lead customer experience here at Consensus. So we program this uh, webinar our series. We're always open for your feedback. So if you have an idea for a webinar, please let us know. This webinar in particular is in response to, uh, to requests uh, of customers like you. Uh, they wanted to learn more about uh, sales taxes. There were some recurring questions coming our way. So that's why we decided to, to create this webinar. And uh, I wanted to let you know that from the customer experience department, we're continuously creating content at the, and we want it to be useful uh, to you. We recently have published three new portals and we would love you to explore them and let us know if they are useful for you uh, in order to navigate all the resources that are available when you want to keep on learning SAP Business One or training new users, or you want to have access to tips and tricks, we have these three new portals. We're going to be sending you the link in the follow-up email after this webinar. So we really would appreciate it if you can let us know what you think and if you think that they're useful or if you have additional ideas for us to improve uh, that type of content, okay? Um, before we get started, this is just uh, some reminders. The webinar is being recorded, so it would be made available to you later. And uh, if you have questions, uh, we will not attend to those questions during the presentation, but at the end of it. But please feel free to use the Q&A functionality that Zoom has. Uh, there is a Q&A button uh, at the bottom of your screen, probably. Just uh, send the questions the way you can do that in the middle of the presentation, and we will try to reply to all the questions by the end uh, of the presentation. Uh, all participants are muted by default so that we can flow with the content, and both Marisa and myself, we are going to now uh, stop our camera sharing, now that you have seen us already, <laughs> and uh, so that we can uh, all uh, concentrate on the content. The webinar today is going to be covering uh, some of these aspects in relation to sales tax 
management. So the initial setup, how tax codes are determined and uh, tax amounts calculated, how to handle a tax exemption, how to see the tax report, uh, how uh, the tax on freight, how to override a sales tax in a specific document. And then we will have time, I think, for the questions and answers. So again, thank you all for being here. I'm, not, I'm now going to stop sharing so that we can go and enjoy Marisa's presentation. Thank you again. Okay, so let's start with the sales tax uh, configuration. And I'm not talking that much about how to create tax codes. We will review it uh, just very briefly. Uh, our main purpose is just to check how SAP handles the sales taxes in the documents, in the sales documents, okay? So let's start first with the configuration, and that would be uh, the items, right? So uh, let me just go to the inventory item master data. We will use two items, just like an example. I will use the uh, A0001 and two, but uh, let's go first with the one. Anytime that you create an item in SAP, by default, it is created as tax liable. Do you see it under the general tab? So it is tax liable. If I want to create an item, by default, it will be tax liable as well as inventory, sales, and purchase item. So that is the first setting. So we will use this item. We'll, we will also use the, this item, the A0002, uh, that I removed the tax liable option, okay? So we can use both items in one single document. Uh, just to give us an idea how SAP works uh, with the sales taxes. Let's go also to talk about our customers. Uh, we will do the same thing. We will use two different customers. Uh, so in this case, that will be parameter technology. So by default, anytime that you create a customer, if you go to the accounting taxes and accounting uh, settings, so by default is liable. In this case, this customer is tax exempt. Okay, um, it has a certificate of exemption number. And one thing that you can do is to create some alerts, notifications, any reminder that when this certificate um, should be renewal, right? So you can do that with uh, some activities with an alert, but basically you can just go here to activities and create an activity for that one. In this case, I already did it. So here you have your related activities. Let me just go to the ones that are still open. So do you see in line in the line three, activity number 45. So basically it is a, a reminder uh, for December 1st. It is a task. Um, and what is the status? Of course, nothing. And sales tax certificate. So basically if I open my activity, I see in there that sales tax certificate, this is an alert that basically it is an activity task and the type you can create this type here if you want to. And also I have uh, my activity as a reminder. So I need a reminder, right? These activities, if you have them in the system, are, are also listed in your calendar. So I'm um, in December, you see here, here is my activity, okay? So that is one of the things that you can do. They ship to addresses. Because basically, sales taxes um, are based on this address that I actually am shipping my products, right? My goods and, and or services. In this case, it is to the main warehouse that is in Delaware, Pennsylvania. I created this tax code, and basically the, the tax code is the same as the zip code. Okay, so I just did it this way. Um, and then I can just click in there just to show you, right? Basically, I created this is the code, the name is 1983-PA data for the, uh, for the state of Pennsylvania. In this case, you can see that uh, the type is for the state. These are the jurisdiction. The state of Pennsylvania, 6%. I already have the counts pretty fine in there. Uh, now I added the city, Delaware. The rate for Delaware is, is zero, so that's fine. But what is the thing? At some point, Delaware could have a tax. So I already have this one, you can add it later on, but basically you can just change the, the actual rate. Um, so let me just show you very briefly. I, for me to go to the table, 
I could go to the modules and set up finance, sales tax, jurisdiction. But I use this one. I just go new and it takes me to the table. I'm not adding anything. It is just to show you how you can do it. So basically, I created the, this, uh, this one for Delaware. So tax rate, as you can see in the column, is empty, is zero uh, from this year. I already have the counts in there. But if I want to change the rate, I double click in the line and then say, let's say on July 1st, I already know that the tax rate will change to 1%. So if uh, uh, when, uh, when uh, July comes in, um, I don't need to worry about the sales tax anymore because the system will just read this one based on the posting date, okay? So it's already there. So it is, it is uh, critical for us to have the sales taxes well-defined for the ship to addresses. Look, what if the customer, if the customer is exempt, actually the system shouldn't um, add any tax, right? So let's go and do it. Let's go and do an, a document for this customer. So I can just go to the cell solder, right? And let's go and uh, add these two items with the shift, I select both. This is the quantity, uh, the unit price. I have the sales tax code, the same thing for both of them, right? So in here, do you see in the tax, the tax amount is zero. Why? Even if the tax rate is 6% and the items are liable, uh, my customer, one of the items is liable actually, the other is not, but my customer is exempt. So let me just um, bring in the tax information so you can see that. So that is the tax code, the percentage. I could have also the, what is the tax amount? Let me just go there if it is tax liable or not. Let me just remove these fields. That is a tax amount. Um, here it is. Okay. So as you can see, I have here the tax liable, it is no. So even if one of the items is tax liable and the other is not, the tax amount in both cases, it is zero, okay? I could overwrite this one, I could say, even if this customer is tax, it is tax exempt. I could just change this one and say no. It is. It, it's going to be yes, right? So in that case, I will be adding taxes. But as the customer is exempt, I don't want to do that. So I can say just okay. Let's go and um, let's say that this is for March 15. So I can add my document. So let's go back to the document. Here it is. So no taxes. Uh, even if I convert this into an invoice, there shouldn't be an issue, right? I still don't have the tax amount listed in here. And after I uh, add my document in my journal entry, I shouldn't have any, anything re re related to taxes. So this is fine. I just can go and add uh, Let's go and talk about the other customer. So this is this is actually my. Um, let me just look for the actual document. It is from today, from this uh, day. Okay. So this is my customer. That's as I already mentioned. It is tax exempt. So let's go and use this other customer, microchips. It is tax liable. Let's go to the addresses. So basically in this ship too, the tax code is New York. So if I go here, there, the state is New York, and in here you will see the components. It is the state, the county, and the city. So the, it is the total. The tax rate is gonna be 825, okay? So one of the things that you find here, it is the um, single item tax. There are some items that uh, there could be like a threshold, right? Uh, an amount say, okay, you need to apply 1% uh, up until the item is $5,000. After that, not anymore. So in that case, you have the option to uh, define those. Uh, if it is a flat rate or flat amount, I'm sorry, no flat rate, flat amount, you can do it as well. If one of the items has that option, I mean, any of these components, then this checkbox for the single item tax would be available, okay? And also just keep in mind, 
if you can just include this one in the freight charges, okay? Uh, most of the freights are not taxable, but it could. So in this case, this customer is tax liable and the tax code is a New York 825. So let's go and create a document for the same, for this customer. Yes, I know that. Uh, let's say that delivery is gonna be March 15 as well. I select these two items, okay? So let's say I don't have a price for this one. Let me just check what would be the best price. I can just with a right click, show me the last prices. So for this customer, my last prices are actually, um, I would say 250, right? Or 300, so let's go for 300. So as you can see, the tax rate, it is this, the same for both of them, but in the tax level column, one item is yes, the other is no. So now the system will uh, add the tax amount for the uh, item that is tax liable. And uh, for the other one, it's gonna be zero, right? So I can just go and add my sales order. Let me just go back to it. And let me just go to uh, create the invoice. So before going to the invoice, let me just check the journal entry. So in the journal entry in the first line is account receivables. Then I have three different lines for the for by jurisdiction. Basically, it is the, the sales tax for the state, the county, uh, and the city. There are companies that they use the same liability account, but if you want to keep track, you could use a different yield account uh, by jurisdiction. Okay. Um, and actually, after that, it is the, what is the revenue, the inventory, cost of sales. So everything is fine. Everything looks good. So now I can just add my um, document. Oh, same thing. Let me just go. So this would be it. And um, so now I have my taxes in here, 74.33. Okay. So that is the difference between having, let me just close this one. Um, what is the difference between the customer that it is tax liable or not? Even if uh, you could use the EX, right? Or tax code zero, because maybe actually it is, it could be, you, you can just create a tax code for uh, customer exempt. Uh, it could be EX, it could be zero, anything would do it. What is my only concern? It is that when you run your uh, sales tax report, uh, then you will have all of those customers under the EX code, right? Instead of having under the specific jurisdiction. And if you are shipping products to different states, it's gonna be more difficult just to keep track of those. You can do it, but it's gonna take a little longer, right? So um, one suggestion is to do it, to just find the tax code based on the actual ship to address so you can keep track of those those jurisdictions you know that now um you have online taxes in the past we uh, we were exempt for the sales and the purchases that we did online nowadays that is not the case right um the companies are charging our sales tax based on the ship to address and and they need to report that to each state Right? It is their responsibility. It's what they call, it is uh, in the tax law, there is this um, expression called nexus. Uh, and it, it basically, it defines what is the, my, that relationship between uh, the, your, your business and, uh, and your cost and the states that you're actually doing business in. So it is, it is you can look, uh, you can just Google this, it is the nexus. It is a, um, a sales tax, a tax actually, a law uh, term that you can look for it. And it basically, what is the link? It's basically, what is the link? Uh, and there are different rules by a state. There are some uh, states that require that they have some thresholds for online sales, but there are some more. It is very uh, diverse. So my suggestion is that you need to find out uh, what are the uh, states that you are selling your products or your goods or your services and find out if you are responsible for those uh, sales taxes, okay?
Okay, let's go uh, and talk about uh, some special scenarios, right? When we are talking about um, sales taxes, um, it is very common, what if the uh, tax rate changes uh, in the middle of the actual um, year or the month, the period? So let's go and talk about that specific option. Um, we already used this customer that is microchips and then here we have the tax code for new york right as you can see right now we have 725 actually it should be 825 but um it, it was because of the uh, exam uh, just the rate that we use so let's say that what if um the we i have sales orders uh with data before the actual exchange rate uh, tax rate it changed right so let me just go to um a sales order like this one um let's go to this one let me check what uh, the things i don't want to use an item that it is serialized uh let me just check because i want to use an item that it is uh this is not a serialized item let me just add um this one right and let me just delete this row so we will use basic thing um for this example so basically the the tax rate is 825 right and now um if i want to ship my product or invoice today then if i go to copy to a uh, invoice or the delivery actually as you can see now the tax rate is 725 and um, what is the reason? If I go to the actual tax code, do you see that the city is 1%? It should be two actually, but it is 1%. So let's go and check what changed. So if I go to the final uh, final definition for the taxes, so set up financial taxes and sales tax jurisdiction, I, I said about the city, right? So let's go look for the city. And here I have my city. I double click in the line is line 11. And as you can see, the rate was 2%, but I changed it as of February 15 to 1%, right? So it means that any document after February 15 will change to 1%. So that is the reason that now I can just go and post my transaction. And I feel confident that this is the current tax rate um, for my document, for my email. So let's go and just add it. And if I go, let me just go and look for that specific invoice. It was this last one. So basically, here I have it. It is the 725. If we review what is the journal entry, I will have the breakdown by jurisdiction, state, county, and the city. Okay. So that's how we can handle um, the tax rate whenever it changes. But keep in mind, you need to keep, to just be careful that uh, and be on top of that with your accountant, someone inside the company, uh, to be aware of those changes in the sales tax rates, OK? Now, um, there is another scenario where, and let me check if we can use this same customer. Um, let me just check if we can just do it for this one. Or right, you know what, uh, there is another customer, I guess, that uh, I have this one. OK, let's go to uh, to use this one. What if I have a customer that sells to uh, Alaska? And one of the things in Alaska is that the state of Alaska is the tax rate is zero, OK, the state. But some cities, some um, counties, they can make the decision to charge taxes. And they can could go at, at uh, up until seven percent or more but i'm using this anchorage as an example because anchorage is still zero percent so let's say that you are selling to this specific customer this address in in alaska where actually it is zero percent and then and that um, you don't need you don't need to report taxes because that is a different thing one thing is if uh, the customer is exempt for me the big difference is if you need to report taxes, right, to submit, to file the taxes, even if those are exempt or um, whatever rate you have. So, but let's say that in this case, you don't need to report tax exempt anything 
to the state of Alaska. In that case, I don't need to have this breakdown, right? So basically, I could just define that for Alaska. I could just define that the tax code is going to be exempt. I could create a tax code for Alaska, but I am, I'm not responsible just to make a file for the sales taxes in Alaska. So in that case, for me, saying that tax code exempt is just good enough, okay? This would be a standard document. Uh, it is only this one. Um, it is just create a sales order, any uh, invoice document, anything. And uh, basically, it will be just tax exempt. What is the thing that, uh, let me just go create some order. Yes. And same thing, let's go for these two items. Right? I already have the, the right. So even if the tax, do you, do you see that even if one of the items is tax liable and the other is not, basically what I'm saying it is that it is exempt. So that is the, because the tax code, the rate for this tax code is zero, right? So in this case, if I go to my definitions for my customer, it says that it is liable. This customer is liable. One of the items is liable, the other it is not. But the total for the taxes is zero because for Alaska, my tax rate is zero and I don't need to submit taxes to report the, 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 the file, right? So basically, for me, in this case, I could use the exempt or the EX or create a code called zero. And that's a, that, that, would, that would work, okay? So basically, that's how the system uh, would work for this one. Um, so, okay, I'm the, missing the delivery date. Let me just, yes. And then if I go back, here I have it. Let me just go create the invoice. of today and then i can just add it yes so i already know that uh, there is some issue with um, this would be so if i go to my journal entry preview so here i have it says so that's zero okay so that's how you can just work with those um that that those two specific scenarios for whenever you don't need to submit um uh, the, the report for the taxes or whenever the uh, sales tax rate changes, okay? When this scenario applies to you, um, you could be a company that uh, you're a reseller of any type of car. Let's say it's laptops, it could be um, office supplies, it could be um, lab supplies, anything that you are actually uh, a distributor. So you actually are a reseller. But let's say that at some point you open a new office and then you are buying also for your own use. So it could be laptops. You're open, opening a, a new office and you need to buy computers for um, all the new employees, right? So, so basically those are not for resale. So in that case, those laptops, are subject to tax and you, it is your responsibility to submit the tax and pay those taxes, right? So how does it work? The first thing is that in the, the company, so this could be done at any time, I mean, and the company details to uh, use the box for the use tax. So in the accounting data, um, in the company details, use the checkbox, use tax, right? What else can you, you, you need to do? Your warehouses, because basically when you're buying, right, the ship to address from your vendor is actually your warehouses um, addresses. So basically that's what uh, you can do. You can come to actually warehouse and check the box for allow to use tax, right? So that is the other thing. Uh, look at this one. I have the tax for Texas, right? So I, I don't have in here EX, like, like everything exempt. So in that case, I will use this option. Let's say that my warehouse it is in Texas, so I can use that, okay? And what is the other thing? The actual item configuration. So if I go to the items, and let me just go to one, got some uh, items that are a little pricey, so we could just go and look for those. So in this case, do you see the item is tax liable? Because when you sell the product, when you sell this, 
it is tax liable. You charge your customer, right? But in the purchasing data, in the bottom, you have that tax type. Every time that you create an item, by default, uses the regular tax. In this case, we are saying, no, this is use tax. And you can change it in the actual document, OK? So this is one of the options. Uh, let me just go. If we have more, the PC2 is regular tax. So let's go and use both, OK? Let's go and create a purchase order. Let's go select our vendor. And it could be any, as long as uh, I don't want a foreign vendor. So let's go for Far East Imports. So that is the date. So if I say PCs, let's go and select both. Another name, okay. Okay. Oh, it must be one. Okay. This two. So basically, this is the quantity. Let's say that I'm buying 10 from this and three from this. So actually, my purchasing is for 17,280. There I have my tax amount, my tax code, right? That is the tax rate. In this case, you see use tax and regular tax. When I go to the bottom, it is sec. It is a, I have the tax only for one of the lines, right? But let's say that you get the bill from your vendor and they are not, as you are tax exempt, they are not charging you the taxes. So basically you don't have, the bill is only for the actual product, for the actual items. So they are not charging you with the taxes. So this would be the total amount, right? So um, I already moved the buttons here, so I don't need to, based on the resolution, go up and down. So now I have my purchase order. Copy two, let's go to the invoice. So this is the invoice from my vendor, and actually that is the amount that they are charging me, right? They are not charging the taxes. So here you have the amount, 17,000, but let me just show you tax zero. So I can just add and view my accounts payable invoice. And now that I have it, I, let's go and take a look at the actual journal entry. So in this case, as you can see, I owe my vendor only what the bill said, $17,280, right? But now I have 1,000 plus in, in taxes, that is use tax. I'm responsible for that one. So my items actually, the cost is not 17,000. Actually, it is, that is my inventory value now, right? It was revaluated, it is revaluated in that, in that amount. So this way I will pay to my vendor the amount that they charge, but then I will have the liability for those use tax. You can go to the actual, um, Let's go to the journal entry, uh, take a look at the actual account. So it is in the liabilities that I have it. So you will know that you owe that money, right? So in there, I will have some, a few transactions. Uh, let me just, so today. So there are a few transactions already there. So that is for purchasing for use tax. So it's a simple scenario, but um, but it's something that we need to uh, think about it because I guess that um, that is one of the mm, the tax rules mm, that uh, we ignore all the time. And uh, whenever we get an audit from the Department of Revenue from your own state, um, you could be in trouble for that one. So my suggestion is talk to your accountant. Uh, the CPA, whoever is in charge of those, and just analyze the scenario if it uh, if the scenario applies to you. Okay. Now let's go to uh, talk about the the tax reports. So let's go to financials, and in the under the financials, let's go to actually tax report. Look, it is here. Financials. Let me just close. It is not under financial. This is under accounting. But you also find the agent, general ledger. Here, there you have your tax report. And as you can see here, I changed it to be only for this month. Um, it is by default regular tax. 
But as you can see, you could select the AP documents as well and use the, and, and the report for use tax, okay? Um, so you will have that information as well. Uh, you also have the option to bring the incoming payments and outgoing payments. And the reason is that you could have deferred taxes. Uh, this is a scenario where, um, let's say that you are selling those same computers that I was talking about, and sometimes you finance your customers. So let's say that you are selling today for a specific customer 25,000 in laptops, but actually they will be paying you like in installments. So uh, you could use the deferred tax. Again, please consult your CPA, but deferred taxes, uh, those are apply only at the time of the payment, right? So you are not responsible for the sales taxes today that you invoice your customer. Um, it could be at the time that uh, they actually pay those in those installments. So in that case, you can use the deferred tax. And with the deferred tax, you could have a specific uh, GL account for that one. You know what, let me just uh, go there very briefly. If I go to the chart of accounts, if you're using the standard chart of accounts from SAP, here on the, the liabilities, you will find that deferred tax. This is the one. No, it is, I know that it is the, someone renamed. It is the 231. That is the one. So it is deferred taxes. So this is the account that will be affected uh, when you are using the deferred taxes. In that case, it is that uh, your customer, you can define your customer, right? So let me just go there. So you have that option. That is the reason that we have here incoming and, and ongoing payments. So let me just go here. Select a customer, any parameter technology. And uh, under the accounting tab for taxes, you have this checkbox, deferred tax. Okay. So you can use that one if that is the case at the time that you issue the sales, issue your invoice. The deferred tax and the account will be affected, right? And then at the time of the payment, it will be affected again, but now in this case, uh, it will be in the debit instead of the credit, and then you will have the liability for the actual sales tax, okay? Um, so that is one of the things that, um, that uh, you need just to take into account. One thing, the tax code, you need to have the actual um, tax account, um, uh, GL account for the deferred taxes, okay? So what? Let's go back to the tax report. So here, um, I just moved, let's say we, you could just, this is like in AB, ABC order, but you can just select any of these. And if you're in Ohio, you, you can just move it to the top, right? So you don't need to go all the time to the bottom. So basically that's what I did. I moved uh, the ones for New York. I have three because one is a state, county, and city. I moved Florida as a state. I removed this exempt, that actually has a typo, uh, and then I have Texas. So all of them are on the top of my list, right? So it's gonna be easier for me just to work with this one. In this case, I can go by the tax code, right? So if I say, okay, just show me this, and here I will have it. It is just the total amount by tax code, right? I could say expand, but I will have the documents, but I guess that this time I really am more interested in the, in the total amount. So when you go for the tax code, uh, you don't have the, that breakdown that you have for by jurisdiction tax code. So in this case, if I click in here, what I will have is every single jurisdiction. Of course, in here, I don't have more than in the, the tax. If I expand, of course, I will have the document, the same thing, but if I collapse, I will have uh, each jurisdiction type. So I will have New York as a state with its own rate, the county and the city, right? So as you can see, the total amount for sales is the same because it, it, it applies to all of them. The taxable amount, same thing, it is the total, right? For that tax code. But now the, the, here I have the non-taxable amount. There were some items that were not taxable. And, base, and at, the, at the end, I have the tax amount. And in here, I will have it by jurisdiction. So I will have the amount for the state, for the county, and for the city. And it's going to be the same thing for the other. Let's say in Texas, I only have for the state. So that is the reason I only have one line. 
Um, so now I will have the, my total amount of sales, taxable amount, the total as well. Uh, if you have uh, freight charges that are taxable, then I have the non-taxable amount, and finally that my uh, liability for uh, sales taxes for this specific period. Okay. So hopefully um, this will help you to work with the sales taxes and have that uh, uh, on time, right? Um, if, and, but if you have any specific scenario, uh, just let us know. Maybe if we don't get if we don't have the answers, uh, we will we can help you with that, how to set up in the system and make it work uh, to to fit your needs. Okay. So okay. So thank you very much for attending the the webinar. And let me know if uh, you have any questions, even if we don't have the time today. But I guess that we have some uh, a few minutes just to go through those. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you, Marisa. Uh, thank you so much for uh, questions. I see we have we have some questions on the Q and A. Thank you for using that functionality. So we're going to go uh, to one of the questions uh, that says, "What if your sales terms are FOB shipping point? For example, the customer is in New York and the seller ships to customer from Texas. The customer pays freight." Um, thank you, Clarita. Gina, you know what? I, I guess that is a question more for your accountant, for your CPA, if you want to charge, uh, if you should be charging taxes uh, at the point of the pickup customer, or if that's gonna be at the actually shipping address. Um, what I understand for, for, for by your question is that actually the customer is picking up the product, right? If that is the, if that is the, the case, I guess that, uh, the ship to address is actually uh, Texas, right? So it wouldn't be in that case, New York. That's what I understand, but uh, I will just uh, refer that question to your CPA. What will be the exact answer for those sales taxes, yes. Okay, fantastic. We have also two questions from Anai. And uh, the first one is, since we deliver in more than 20,000 different zip codes, is there a way to handle automatically the update for the tax and surtax rate, a solution similar to Avalara? Uh, yes, I, 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 and actually I didn't include it in the, in the webinar. Mm -hmm. It is what we call uh, tax as a service. Uh, that is a service from SAP. It doesn't have any additional cost. It is a service uh, it is uh, taking the tax rate from a web service. Mm -hmm. uh, you can activate it anytime um, in the company. Uh, actually, you could just define that for some customers, it should apply the tax as a service or not. Basically, the tax as a service, uh, what is that? It creates a tax code every time that you create a sales order based on the ship to address. So you will see that in the, um, the tax code, actually it is start with the pound sign and then the zip code and it ends with SS for services, SM for inventory items. Um, so basically that's how we handle those uh, huge um, ship to addresses uh, in the system. So yeah, that would be my answer. Yes, it's similar to Avalara actually. Okay. Uh, we found a, a small difference uh, one time that we were downloading uh, cell servers that were uh, that used the Avalara in web pages, and it was due to the rounding. It was a rounding in Avalara that we didn't have that in SAP. So there was a small difference, but I guess that that was already resolved. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Um, uh, Anna's second question is: Sales in states with don't have a nexus, there is a specific rules threshold reached. Is there a way to handle for those thresholds with SAP? The way that I would do it, it is creating a specific tax code for those. So let's say that you have a tax code for a zip code uh, in Pennsylvania. And, and let me just, uh, if it is uh, for the same state, I guess that every single, I would say that every single sells to that specific, uh, not a state, but the zip code. Because in the state, I mean, there, there, there could be like a rule for the state and that would apply to every single tax code related to that state. Uh, I guess that there could be some for the counties, for cities. In that case, uh, you would need to define the threshold for the specific tax code for that specific actually um, um, zip code or city. 
The one thing that I will need just to confirm and ice for you, it is if tax as a service uh, handles those thresholds. I know that they don't handle the maximum amount that when you have like that cap saying, okay, if the amount uh, for a single item is more than 5,000, it is only 1% and after that zero, though, the, uh, or a flat amount, those are not handled through tax as a service, but we can certainly just review your, your scenario. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, Gina has also another question. How do you reconcile tax report to GL? Um, I don't really understand the question, Gina, because it's actually, um, well, uh, are you referring to, well, let's say that you pay your sales taxes and then you may want to make sure that those uh, liability accounts are now zero or going to the, the amount, the balance by the end of the month. Uh, is that your question, Gina? Okay, while we wait. Yes, correct. Gina says uh, correct. <laughs> okay. okay, when you click in your, um, let me just share my screen. Um, okay, great. If I can just, let me just uh, open a, an SAP. Um, allow me to share my screen just just to check if that is actually your question. Uh, Clarita, I cannot share my screen. No? It says that okay. the host disabled participant screen sharing. Oh, okay. Let me make you the host. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me go. No, I yes. can't do it. Yeah. Um, so, Marita, can you please confirm that you're seeing my yes, screen? Yes, we are seeing. Uh, so one option is uh, when you go to the chart of accounts, uh, let's go to the liabilities. If we have sales tax here, like state, uh, I guess this would be your question, right? So in here, you will have a lot of transactions. Um, most of them are invoices, right? Uh, there could be some current memos. So I guess that as soon as you pay your liability, you could just come to the internal reconciliation. There would be some, of course, all of this here. Uh, and I would do it on a monthly basis, let's say. Uh, so do you see that this in this line, we have 10,000 sales tax payment for 2016. So I guess that what you could do is just come in here and select the transaction that you would like to, I, I'm just saying, selecting all of this. Um, and at some point in the bottom, you should, see, you, you should have like a zero. And uh, that's how we, uh, I would just reconcile to make sure that everything is balanced. Get an internal reconciliation. And I would do it using the last date of the month that I'm reconciling. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. So we have other questions. Uh, uh, one of the assistants is asking, how do I add the tax to freight? Uh, okay. So let me just go to the tax code. Uh, if you don't remember, where is it? Because I mean, you don't go that often to the actual setup, right? But it is administration setup and it is a financial setting. So you go there and then you will have to hear the tax. But the other option is just put it here. Oops, tax codes. And there you have it. So basically uh, when you go to the taxes, right? Like in this case, I don't have the freight uh, affected by the tax. Uh, so it is based on the some states or some, in some cases, you will need to um, charge taxes to the freight. So in that case, you, you will do it just here, just select freight. And in that case, the freight that you have in the document will be affected by this tax code. You can overwrite it, okay? So um, if there's any case, let me just check if I'm, I can show you. If I go to a document and sales. Very quickly, uh, Maxitech here. I don't know if I have a, an address for, for Pennsylvania, but I will just use it. Oh, I have it. So basically, here we have all this. But uh, so as you can see, you, you have the the tax already there. So if you go to the freight charges in here, you need just to define what is the tax, the gross amount for the freight charges. Okay, what is the net amount? So if I say okay, one hundred then I will have the, the six dollars for those 100 for freight charges, okay? You could overwrite it just in case. Uh, so you could say, okay, no, for the taxes anyway, I want to, uh, from freight charges, I want to have 
exempt and this would work. But if you have it defined in your tax code, it will apply to the freight charges um, at, at the document level. And remember, you also have the option to add freight charges at row level. So it would apply to all of them. Okay, great. Another question is, uh, should taxes be included in the down payment invoice? Okay, um, that would be a question also for an accountant, I mean, for a CPA, but that is, this is my opinion. Um, if a customer is doing a, a prepayment, I'm actually done. I'm not selling at that point anything. So I wouldn't charge it. I wouldn't charge the tax. And this is how the system will, will do it. That is actually by a document setting. So um, same thing, you go to administration, system initialization, document settings. And in the document settings, settings when you open this one, under per document, you find the down payment invoice. Here you have the checkbox, enable tax calculation in down payment invoices. If you do that, then uh, you have that option in the document. If not, uh, it won't apply to the down payment. So uh, just same thing as I said for you. you. Maybe you don't remember, but in here, document settings, okay? So let me just show you with this transaction. Um, same here. Same item. So basically, let's say that I have this as order and this is for March 15. No, I should move this. So basically, I already have my tax in there, right? Item view, yes. So now I want to create a down payment invoice. So if I go to the down payment invoice, in here, I don't have the tax. Let's say that it's going to be for 45%. I don't have the tax. If I change that setting, I will have the tax here, OK? That would be like, but but I guess that, I guess that this, I shouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it because that is a prepayment. I'm, I'm not affecting actually uh, the PL in a down payment invoice. It is between account receivables and a prepaid um, uh, sales document. So actually, it is like a liability. So actually, I'm not selling anything at this time. So I guess that I wouldn't do it. That's the same thing I will ask to, to the accountant. Yeah. Fantastic. Marisa, what if a tax account is missing? Oh, yeah. That is pretty common. So um, what is the thing that you will need to look at whenever an account is missing? So let's say that you have a sales order. Let's go to any open sales order. In this case, this one. Let's say that you are trying to to add an invoice. In the sales order, we are not affecting accounting, so there won't be an issue. But at the time of the invoice, yes. Or uh, yeah, so in that, even in the delivery, the tax is not mandatory, but at the time of the invoicing or credit memo, you need it. So if that is the case, just go to the origin of the tax code, right? Um, so basically what you will see is that one of one accounting here for sales tax, it is missing. I guess that the purchasing a new tax, it is irrelevant for the sales, but it is the sales tax account that is missing. So um, let me just show you. I, I could have, um, I guess that all of the tax code that I have here, they have the, 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 the account, but basically it is in here. You will see that the, the sales tax account, it is missing. The way to, for you just to, to add it is go to the actual, um, the tax code setup. So let me just close. Uh, Go there. So same thing, tax code. And you need to go to the off. I'm not, the, not, it is not the tax code, I'm sorry. Tax jurisdictions, because actually it is in there that you define, um, I don't know which one, okay, types, this one. So if it is this, if this is an estate and you're missing the tax account, look, if we are in, in USA, uh, I mean, because you could have customers in, I don't know, Canada, so if you create those taxes, you will need to define for the provinces in Canada, right? But uh, for USA states, the accounts are already there. But let's say that you create a new um, tax code with a new city. Those, you don't have them. So let's say that if it is for a city. So if I go to the list of the cities and I come in here, I'm in Miami. So let's say that I say, okay, this is going to be Miami. So even if I update, I'm missing two things. Or more than one, but, but 
it is not the account what is missing here that I cannot create and add the city. It is that the rate, I haven't defined the rate. I need to double click in the line of the city, right? And say, okay, let's say from January 1st and the rate is uh, actually is Miami-Dade County is 1%. This should be not even city, it should be the county. I could create this one. The system allows me to do it without the account. So if I, my, I, if I include Miami in a tax code now, the tax, the tax account would be missing. So it is in here that you should just add it. And I can just say this one and that's it, okay? So you need to look first in the tax code, what are the jurisdiction that, is, that, that the account is missing? And then go to the actual sales tax jurisdiction. If it is state, no, state, no. I mean, if I open state, uh, you will have them there, right? By default, they are there. But if you go to, to cities or counties, that is not the case. You add a new county and then you will need just to define the accounts. Thank you, Marisa. Um, a lot of questions today. <laughs> so we knew this, this was a topic of interest. Uh, how, can, uh, how can we configure a special tax for a customer? So um, basically you would like to have a specific tax for that customer. Um, yeah, you can do it anytime. I mean, and, and, and it be, maybe is, it would be easier for you just to create the tax code uh, with the code of your customer, I guess. So let's say that I would like to have a, a specific tax code for a customer. Let me just go there. Let me just get that list for the customers. This one is called text. I don't know who created this one, but um, let's go to addresses. So basically in here, I don't have a tax code. Let's say that I would like to have a tax code specifically for this customer. I could use this one, right? Here, I don't have a tax code and I need to create one. So I can just come here new and then define what is the tax code. And of course you need to define that's, is that gonna be a, for a state? What is, what's gonna be the component? It could be a special district and if that is the case. Look, in the, in the jurisdiction, let me just show you something now that we're talking about those jurisdictions, because you could just create any tax jurisdictions. When you are creating jurisdictions, you have special district, this form, but you can define new. So you could create a jurisdiction only for this customer if you want to, or you could use the special district if you want as well. And then put in here, what is the code? What is the code? Define the sales account for the actual sales tax, uh, and I'm gonna say other. And then I will just double click in the line, define the rate. And I will say, okay, this is, I don't know, 5.5% and then update. So now I will have it in there. And then I can just come in here and look for that jurisdiction. And then I, this way I can create a, a tax code only for this customer. And Thank you, Mari. I will, I will do the update. Okay. Okay, great. Um, Mari, can you show us a deferred tax scenario? Oh my God, do we have enough time for that one? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, so uh, let me just go to any customer. Uh, let's say that, uh, let's go and use uh, MaxiTech. Um, so the first thing is that uh, for the accounting in the tax, you will need to, I guess that I mentioned that in the for tax, right? Let me just update it. Then it goes to the addresses as well. So for this customer tax code is Pennsylvania and is missing the deferred tax account. So that is the other thing that we need to uh, update. So basically I need to go to the tax jurisdiction. Let me just put it here. Select the state and look for Pennsylvania uh, here. And I, as I mentioned in the video, I know that 231. So basically, uh, if I already have it in there, 
let me open this. Now I have the deferred tax. So how does it work? Basically, you will have, uh, let's go and, and uh, create a, a sales order for this one very quickly. That's gonna be March 15, same item. Is this the one that is uh, taxable, right? I guess. So add and view. Then I go to the uh, invoice. So here in the invoice, allow me just to remove the controls. Um, numbers. Okay, here in my journal entry. Um, do you, in line two, do you see that there you have the 231 account that is deferred taxes? So this is not the sales tax liability account. This is in the invoice. I have the deferred tax account. Add and view. Okay. Yes. Yes. So let's say that now I want to pay this invoice. I can go to the banking module or I can just do it. The thing is, if I do it in here, um, it's gonna be only for this invoice and it will be dated as of today. So I, let's say that I select the bank account and that will be this one tab that is today, whatever reference, control B as in balance, enter, enter, enter. And let me just go back to this payment. So if I go by journal entry, you can go to the transaction number or to the premium. So in there, um, the lines five and six. So in six, I have the, the debit for the deferred tax. And in five, I have the sales tax accrual. So actually that is my real liability for sales taxes. That's how deferred taxes, that is a very rare scenario. I, yeah, it is not that common. Allow me just to change this one because if not, someone is gonna be confused about this. Okay. Us all. Any other question? Mari, I just have one last question for you. I know we've we've gone a little longer than 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 expected, but everybody's still here. So I guess they 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 all want to hear. If you have time, that would be great. And for the last question, uh, it says, how do you get the information when navigating through the fields? Oh, it was in the in the in the first two parts of the videos, right? <laughs> so yeah, so that is what it is called. That is a tip, actually. It is called a tooltip preview. Let me just tooltip preview. Is this one under system initialization? So in there, you can just activate to have that information by default. So let's say that I have it here for business partners, and basically it is visible the account code. The account, I mean, I guess that I don't need to. The account code, I already have it there, right? I don't need this one. I don't need this one. I know what the customer is, but maybe the, the, the current balance, yes. I don't know if the account type, you could have the details. Um, I guess that uh, that would be good enough, right? If it is this one, so update. But um, let's say in Iden Master, if I select the Iden Master, I guess that you don't need to have this, but uh, foreign name, no. But uh, maybe the item group, yes, the unit of measure, barcode, have it if it is tax liable or not. So you have all of this information. So anytime that you um, go through, let's say for, I said business partners, right? So if I go to a purchase order, um, when I'm in here, I guess, ah, you need to activate it also in the, in the administration. I don't remember exactly what it is. It should be under the display. I guess it would be here. Um, some place here, it is that you have the, the tool tip preview or services maybe. I don't remember what is it, but I, uh, I will let you know what is it actually, that uh, there is this tool tip preview updated. So you can just have that one. I don't remember what is it. I think it I, was where you were. Maybe you were in the chart of accounts, maybe. Instead no, of no, the BPs, no. no? Oh, okay, sorry. No, no. it is because uh, you need to activate actually in the 
in, in the document settings, but I, I don't remember where it is, if it is in the document settings here in the general or if it is um, in the general settings. Uh, we just need to check and we owe you that one. I don't remember where is it. I think it's a little check mark under tooltip mm -hmm. preview setup. Uh, and what I is that? I think I remember. If you go back to the tooltip. Okay. Whoops. Yeah. That little oh, check mark. Oh yes. my God. I'm yes. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I just, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was, uh, that was so silly. Someone uh, so else is, someone else was, was helping me. <laughs> thank you, whoever was in charge. So basically, whenever you have a, a, an item, uh, a purchase or anything, and you have this one, you will do it, okay? You will see just that item group, you know, measure group, tax liable, yeah. Great. Item management, everything, yeah. Great, thank you so much. Okay. Well, Mari, I think that was all. Okay. Super valuable content today thank you everyone for for joining us uh in this webinar and um as as i always say please send us your feedback if you found this webinar was useful if you change anything if you have ideas for webinars uh, we are always open to your feedback and we appreciate your support and um, thank you very much to everyone and have a wonderful day thank you marisa again Thank you. Thank you to all of you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.